Uh, so, but let's let's talk about the race as a whole. This was incredible. This runoff election, Willie. Yeah, let's go right over to Steve Kornacki to see how Senator Warnock did it. He's of course NBC News national political correspondent. Uh, Steve, a lot to look at here. You can look at some of those rural counties, but also certainly the Atlanta suburbs, decisive for Senator Warnock. I think that's the headline here in terms of how did he, and he's going to end up winning this thing. Warnock is by nearly three points. Remember, in the preliminary back in November, Warnock finished in first ahead of Walker. The margin back then was a little under one point. So Warnock expands his margin over Walker to nearly three points in the runoff. The biggest single reason for it is this sort of blue blob of counties you see right here in and around Atlanta, the immediate Atlanta metro area. And it's the core Democratic area. It's the core population center for the state. And it's also a place here, county after county, where Warnock had done really well in mm. November. Because remember, in November, Republicans had a good night in Georgia overall. Brian Kemp, the Republican governor, easily reelected over Stacey Abrams. Brad Raffensperger, the Secretary of State, easily reelected. Republicans were winning statewide races in Georgia in November. This is the exception for them back in November, this Senate race, where Walker finished second. So back in November, one of the things that powered Warnock was a place like Gwinnett County. This is one of the fastest growing counties in Georgia. There's now nearly a million people here. And just take a look. The number that Warnock got, this is what you're seeing here on the right. This is back in November. Warnock got nearly 59% here. That was a fantastic number for Warnock out of uh, Gwinnett County back in November. He jumped it up to 62% last night. Herschel Walker, meanwhile, fell from 38.6 to 37.9. Those are the kinds of differences that make all the difference in an election like this. And you saw it throughout the Atlanta metro area. You take a look at Cobb County, another biggie. Warnock's campaign was thrilled with the 56.8 they got in November. They built that nearly three points to 59.5% last night. So he's in one county after another in the immediate Atlanta metro area. Warnock actually met his November number and then built on it. And Walker, in most cases, actually slid back a little from what he got. So that's the single biggest ingredient. And if you zoom out, the bigger picture on this in terms of Georgia, why we now talk about Georgia as a competitive state politically, Joe Biden carrying it in 2020, we expect it to very much be on the map of competitive states in 2024, has everything to do with this Atlanta metro area. It was so striking to me. If you went back in time 10 years, 20 years, say like the 2004 presidential campaign when George W. Bush got reelected over John Kerry, this same set of counties here, this would have been a red county. 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 This would have been red. And this would have been red. There would have been three blue counties in the Atlanta metro area. George W. Bush was winning some of these counties by 25, 30, 35 points. They have now swung all the way around where Warnock's winning them last night by 20, 25, 30 points. You've seen massive population growth in migration to the Atlanta metro area. These counties have gotten bigger. They have gotten that massively bluer. It's the biggest single reason why Warnock wins last night, why Georgia's a competitive state. And the second biggest reason is if you get outside this immediate Atlanta metro area, you still have some biggies, sort of in the exurbs, the far suburbs of Atlanta, none bigger than Cherokee County here, about 45 minutes north of Atlanta. This is the biggest single Republican vote producing county in Georgia, one of the biggest Republican vote producing counties of any county in the United States of America. Herschel Walker last night got 69% here. He needed more than that. He had gotten about 67 and a half back in November. This is what a Republican win in Georgia looks like. It This is Brian Kemp's number in the governor's race in Cherokee County back in November. He got out 74% of the vote. He won the county by almost 50 points. That's the kind of margin. If you're a Republican trying to win in Georgia, you're not getting it in the immediate Atlanta metro area anymore. You got to go to that next level of exurbs there. You need it in a place like Cherokee County. Brian Kemp got it in November. He won the state easily. Look at how far behind Kemp Walker ran back in November in Cherokee County. And so one of his challenges last night was to really drive that number up well over 70 percent. He barely hit 69 percent in Cherokee County. And it was just one county after another, this sort of next tier, next level of counties outside the immediate Atlanta metro area. There's still a lot. There's high populations and they're not quite as high, but there's high populations. There's still a lot of Republican voters. And Walker lagged in November behind Brian Kemp, behind the rest of the Republican ticket. The question for his campaign coming into yesterday was, OK, he had Kemp campaigning for him. He had it seemed like more of a unified party behind him. Could he get those voters who would voted Republican in November but hadn't voted for him in November? Could he get him to the polls and
and could he get him to check his name off this time? And really the answer to that is it looks like a few did, but mostly the answer to that is no. He didn't get the kind of gains, the kind of growth he needed in that next level. And so that one-two punch right there, Warnock driving up the score in the core Democratic areas that are getting more and more blue. I mean, this is a trend election after election. This is a long-term significant trend in Georgia. And then Walker just missing his targets in one big Republican county after another. We could find some rural counties on the map here where Walker actually had some good news last night. Some of those were the earliest reporting counties last night. But after that, the news was pretty uniformly bad for Walker. And it does result in a victory here of nearly three points for Raphael Warnock. Put that in some perspective. When's the last time a Democrat won a U.S. Senate race in Georgia by more than two points? Well, you could say... 2000, there was a special election that year. Zell Miller, a very conservative Democrat who would later be the keynote speech at the Democratic Convention, he won a special election. It was officially nonpartisan. If you take that one out, you got to go all the way back to 1990. Wow. Sam Nunn got reelected in 1990 in a very different Georgia on a very different map. So that's a, a bit of a breakthrough just in terms of a margin there for Democrats to win by nearly three in a Senate race. That's so fascinating. What are, it, just to see the history of the Atlanta suburbs and to see where we are now, it is interesting to note, though, Steve, that Raphael Warnock, Senator Warnock, is the only Democrat who won statewide in this election. In fact, Republicans won pretty comfortably. Uh, you mentioned Governor Kemp, but if you go up and down some of those races. So I guess the question is, is this a story about a good candidate in Senator Warnock, a terrible candidate in Herschel Walker, or is it really about a state that has started to make a turn? It's, it's about a couple, I think there's a combination of factors right there. I mean, the, 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 the changing demographics in, Atlanta, in the Atlanta area and in the state made this possible. It made it possible for Warnock, I think, to capitalize on this situation. But the type of voter, again, if you just call up here, let's see if this will get mm -hmm. the governor's race, if I can call up. Yeah, here you go. I mean, so this is the result last night. This is the result in the preliminary. And this is the result in the governor's race that you're talking about. And yeah, Brian wow. Kemp easily won the governor's race. So that, that turnout that existed, the electorate that existed in the November general election was overall a pretty Republican-friendly electorate. I think in the exit poll back in November, Biden's approval rating in Georgia was just 41 percent. And so a Republican like Brian Kemp was able to capitalize on that. What did Kemp get that Walker didn't get? There's a certain type of voter that d disapproves of Biden, still is very skeptical of the Democratic Party. I think the, as the Democratic Party's become more liberal, too, it's, it probably hasn't helped with that voter. But that voter also does not like Donald Trump. That's it. And I think that's the difference that you see. Those counties where you saw the biggest lag between Kemp and uh, Walker demographically, they were Republican counties, but they were Republican counties that had high concentrations of college graduates. And that's the wing sort of demographically of the Republican Party. There's this college, non-college divide among all voters, but it's also evident among Republican voters uh, it, where you know Trump really excels with non-college voters, non-college white voters in particular, and the counties in Georgia that are Republican but have high concentrations of voters with college degrees, that's where Kemp excelled, and that's where Walker really ran into trouble in November, and it's where Walker really failed to move the needle last night. Well, Steve, um, that point you made about Trump and, and Biden is so interesting. If we pull back a, li a little bit, there's a real negative Trump factor that pervaded the midterms. I mean...